can help you? Oh, I dearly hope someone can help me. I surely do, because if you can't help me, I'll just be beyond help, and then I don't know what else I will do. Do you? Well, what seems to be the trouble, ma'am? Well, my name's Miss Lily May, and I'm in the Hypermax Greenhouse. You know, the floors that delivers every day with no delay. Well, at supper today, that is. You see, it's Mother's Day, and, well, I sold every flower in my shop except for, except for the buds. The buds? The buds! Four dozen of them. They're the flowers that just wouldn't open in time for Mother's Day. Now they're just lying around my shop feeling wilted and worthless. There's tiny tulips and miniature miracles and baby, baby's breasts. It's just so heartbreaking. Oh, please don't cry. I am doing my mother's in about an hour, but well, if you'll bring the buds right over, I'll see what I can do. Oh, thank you. They'll be delivered right away with no delay. Um, I'm going to be a few minutes. 
minutes late today because I've got some patients here that need my help. But I think you can help me. Do you remember when I was little and in a hurry to get big? What did you do? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, okay, I remember. That's what I thought. Thanks, Mom. See you soon. Bye-bye. Your mother has the cure? Most mothers do. In fact, my casebook is full of their story. Um, here's one that happened over 125 years ago, and it tells about the very first Mother's Day. I think it's what we all need to hear. After the end of the Civil War, a woman named Anna Reeves Jarvis organized a committee in her hometown of Gaffin, West Virginia to sponsor a Mother's Friendship Day. The purpose of this day was to reunite families who had been divided by the Civil War. She wanted to bring together brothers who had fought against each other. But Mrs. Jarvis's dream of having a National Mother's Day didn't come true for almost 40 more years. And it was her daughter, Anna, who finally made it happen. On Sunday, May 10, 1908, Anna got several churches to observe Mother's Day and gave them hundreds of carnations to give away. Carnations had been her mother's very favorite flower. Each year, more and more churches started doing the same thing. And in 1914, President Woodrow Wilson made it a holiday for everyone. We can learn a lot from Anna and her mother. Anna was pretty young, but she did something awfully great. And she had two things to help her. First, Anna was patient. She knew she'd have to wait for some of her dreams to come true. And second, she had her mother's help and love. Her mother gave her lots of time and lots of room to grow, just like my mom did for me. Isn't that what your mom's to do for you? Yeah! I thought so. Moms are like that.
clothes. That was just an amazing cure. Well, thank you. But you really should thank my mother and probably yours. And someone else. Well, who's that? Well, it's someone we should talk to every day, especially when we need encouragement. And this is one of the ways that we can do that. Do you know what this is? Bible. That's my, that's my Bible. And I keep it with me all the time because I know that no matter what someone's ailment is, I'll find the right prescription inside. So let's see what God's got to say about you. I know that you want things to happen right away, the very first time you try. But everyone has to learn to wait. The Bible says, blessed is he that waits. And even though it seems like you're having to wait an awfully long time because you're small, remember, God has big plans for you. And he uses you no matter what size you are. It's just like Jesus said about the mustard seed. It's the smallest of all the garden seeds. But when you plant it in the ground, it grows and grows until it becomes the biggest of all the plants. But the main reason I know God has big plans for us is that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for us so that we could live with him eternally. And I know that that's worth waiting for. Stand up. 